Um, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Um, welcome to the webinar of the Guardians of the Planet, Asia Pacific Children and Youth Voices on Climate Crisis and Disaster Risk Reduction. Um, this event is hosted by OCHA, ICFA, and ADRRN. And joining us today, we have um, representative from Plan, Safety Children, World Vision, UNMGCUI, Child Fund, and UNICEF. Before we start the before we start the webinar, I encourage you to drop your name and your organization in the chat box so that we know who you are. And then I also have a few reminders for the audience. Next slide, please. Um, please stay on mute throughout the whole webinar until further notice. During the panel discussion, you may raise your hand and then we might we, we will we can unmute you to say your question. At the same time, please make use of your chat box. You can put your question directly into the chat box so our speakers will answer to that either in the chat box or live during the panel discussion. And if you have any technical problem, feel free to direct message to Jessica. Um, she will be able to assist you. Next. Since we also have a lot of children and youth as our speakers and as participants, I would like all of you to follow the child safeguarding policy. Um, do not send a direct message, private message to our children and youth speakers. And then our children speaker will also not be disclosing any information of their full name, their social media account or their address. And for our children and youth, whether you're a speaker or you're a participant, if you feel uncomfortable during any point of the whole webinar, please feel free to reach out to your agency mentor, myself or Jessica. And if there's any question that you don't feel comfortable to answer, uh, you can also choose not to answer. And during this um, entire webinar, you can keep your camera on as you speak, but you can keep it off when you're not speaking. So that will save some bandwidth. Okay, so I'm very happy today. Uh, my name is Christabel Chen. I am the Regional Humanitarian and Emergency Affairs Specialist from World Vision. And joining us, we have Kunel from World Vision, who is the Acting Regional Humanitarian Emergency Affairs Director. And then we also have Ms. Fonda, who is from Plan International, the Head of Disaster Risk Management for Asia Region. And then we have Rika from UNICEF. She is the Emergency and DR Specialist of East Asia and Pacific Region. We are very honored to also have two representatives from the government joining us as speakers and in our panel discussion. We have Professor Santosh Kumar, the head of CCDRR Center, National Institute of Disaster Management, Government of India, as well from the government of Indonesia. We have Dr. Eric, the director of disaster management system, the National Disaster Management Agency. Thank you all of you for making time. And of course, we have our children and youth representative today joining us and bringing their voice to this platform. Um, we have Ade. Um, he is 17 years old from Indonesia. We have Kanishka, 15 years old from India. We have Mikon, 17 years old from Laos. We have Madhuzmita from 19 years old from India. And also we have one more youth, Nidali, 23 years old from India. And we are very honored to also have Nadia from Safety Children to be our moderator for the panel discussion. She is the technical advisor for disaster risk reduction and school safety. So before we start, can I also show you the quick agenda? Um, today's agenda, you will first be hearing the key findings and background of the consultation we have done in the region just um, early last year, early this year and end of last year. And then you will hear from five, you will hear from, from children and youth representative sharing, and then we'll proceed to two of our government representatives sharing their views. And lastly, we have around 
30 minutes of panel discussion plus Q&A where audience as well as children and youth can ask your question and we'll try to answer them. And then at the end, we will have UNICEF during our closing remarks. So may I now invite Kunal to start us with an opening remarks. Kunal, please. You need to unmute Kunal. Thanks, Christopher, for uh, welcoming all of us. And what a joyous event today. And I see a lot of uh, old faces as well as some uh, fresh faces also on, on the call this morning. And no wonder Guardians of the Planet is such an apt topic, uh, considering that we are having this webinar in the midst of a global pandemic. And children, now, the, the focus of this entire webinar is to be able to bring the voice of the children. Uh, I remember there was a massive study that was going on, and I'm sure Christabel and the other members would be able to highlight uh, some of the findings from those in, in, as we uh, go along with this meeting. Uh, but then the whole importance is to be able to bring the voice of these children and youth uh, in a pandemic situation, considering that we are still in climate crisis situation. And I'm really grateful to our uh, great speakers, Professor Santosh, whom I know, know so well for several years, uh, Dr. Udrek, uh, Rekha from UNICEF, uh, obviously Vanda, with whom we partner and collaborate so much, but the importance of being able to listen to the children and the youth voices in this platform. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity where the adults are able to listen to the children and youth. Their voices are so important that would help us determine our future. And so it's a wonderful location and an opportunity to partner on, on events like this. So with these words, I'll leave the floor open uh, to Christabel to lead and take us forward. Thank you and welcome once again. Thank you, Kunal, for your welcoming. So I'll take the next few minutes to share with you what are some of the works we have been doing in the region across um, a lot of children and youth. Next, please, Jess. So in the period of August 2019 to January 2020, um, World Vision, together with Point International, Save the Children, UN MGCY, UNDRR, and UNICEF, work with a lot of national partners and government to do consultation with nearly 10,000 children and youth across more than 12 countries. So they participated and gave their voices through online consultation and also face-to-face -face consultation. The purpose of this consultation is to empower our children and also collect structurally their comments. This is an effort to prepare for the upcoming Asia Pacific Ministerial Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction. Eventually, the results will be presented at the conference in the form of child and youth statement, and it would be acknowledged by the attending government. Next. The report is now available on WV Relief, which is around 55 pages. And at the same time, we have a very short infographic summary that gives you a short summary um, in a very presentable way. So you can access both of these documents on Relief Web. Next. This is a brief look of the report, you can see that it does give you the summary, um, the background, the introduction, the findings from the online consultation and the findings from the face-to-face -face consultation. We also try to summarize all the recommendations from child and youth and some of the lesson learned throughout this whole process. So the survey itself, the tools are also included uh, as annex and you can also see the breakdown of gender and age findings in the annex, so feel free to go to Relief Web and download for a look. Next. So for the next few minutes, I will just highlight a few key findings. This can be a good foundation or references for today's discussion. First, 
93% of the children and youth see disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation as a very important issue. In fact, they, across the region, climate crisis is ranked the top concern of all children and youth. Along access to work, employment, education, and safe from disaster impact. So you can see on the right um, pie, most of them actually rank DRR and CCA as important, fairly important, and very, very important. Next. Children and youth are no strangers to climate crisis. Actually, near, around 99%, which means almost all of the children and youth, have experienced disaster risk in the past 12 months. The table on the left show you what are the experience, disaster risk experience that the kids reported. So most of them actually have very high linkage with our climate as well. Next. More than 77% of our children and youth have actually noticed more climate related disaster locally in the last two years. So not only are them experiencing those disasters, they're seeing an increasing trend. Next. Children and youth call for inclusive approach to DRR and CCA process. They actually identify themselves children and youth as the most vulnerable group, group of people when facing disaster, followed by elderly people with disability and so on. So they think that children and youth should be at the center of our DRR and CCA process. Next. At the same time, around 45% of the children and youth felt that children and youth with disability are not given enough support to prepare for disasters. They actually also pointed out what are the common challenges for children and youth with disability um, facing in the context of DRR. And therefore, they're calling for very inclusive approach for the government to collaborate with different stakeholders to work together, not just for children and youth, as well as those with disability. Next. Another key finding is we actually need to continue to strengthen education curriculum for climate change adaptation. And one of the biggest reason is 21% of children and youth indicated that formal education is a major channel to learn about climate change and disaster risk. Um, in all the age group, almost all of them report back that formal education is the major channel to learn. And therefore, we have to continue to strengthen this channel to build their knowledge and skills. Next. Children and youth also point out there's a need to mainstream and localize their voices in climate discussion. They want to, and they see that the urgent need to be empowered and be given the opportunity to be heard and be involved. They recognize their potential to be the agent of change, not just among their peers, but also can contribute to the community. At the same time, they also call for the government and the stakeholders to strengthen opportunity for children and youth to voice out in policy processes. And on the right hand side, you can see that as children and youth see them as uh, agent of change, being able to contribute, they also list out the actions they're actually able to contribute. I will not go into details, you can read it yourself. Next. At the end, we managed to organize and summarize the recommendations of, from children and youth. In short, children and youth think that everyone, all of us are responsible to act on disaster risk reduction and address the climate crisis. The key top three message would be, there needs to be inclusive platform for children and youth to speak and contribute a decision-making process. DRRCCA formal education in school curriculum with improved access for disabled CNY. 
And lastly, we should empower CMY to take actions to address climate crisis and disaster risk. As you see on the left hand side, they actually say that actors, including government, Department of Education, national NGO and local CSO, UN and INGO, private sectors and industry, children and youth, as well as everyone has a role and they have different responsibility in addressing climate crisis and DRR. They say that for a better future, we must all work together. For further details, I would encourage you to go to the report itself and read through the details. Next. So now you have here from us, the systematic consolidated comment from the children and youth across the region. Now we will proceed and we will give an opportunity for our children to speak directly to us. So may I now invite Ade to share with us. Ade is from Indonesia. He is 17 years old and he is the chief of child forum of Northern Jakarta. He will be sharing with us his experience in disaster risk reduction. Ade, please. You can unmute and also you can turn on your camera. Thank you very much, Mrs. Christabel Chan. Before we begin, let me introduce myself briefly. I'm Ade from Jakarta, Indonesia. Now I'm going to talk about my DRR experience. Before that, let me talk about Indonesian context on DRR. Next. Indonesian context on disaster. Indonesia can be counted as one of the most disaster-prone countries in the world, regularly experiencing earthquakes, tsunamis, landslides, volcanic eruptions, flooding, and drought. It was noted that over the past 20 years alone, the Indonesian government recorded over 24,000 disasters. Jakarta is the, cap is the capital city of Indonesia, which is prone to disaster and climate change impact. Based on Jakarta government, Jakarta province has three major of hazards, which is flood, fire, and earthquake. Next, my DRR experience. Before that, based on the poll result from your report, it is known that children and youth are the most suffered when a disaster occurs. From the polling is also found that both boys and girls are still lacking knowledge about DRR. Thus, we can conclude that children and youth need to be equipped for the RR capacity so they can save their self and strengthen their community capacity in reducing the risk of disaster. Next. We move to my experience at school. Almost every school in Indonesia, especially in Jakarta, has a youth Red Cross group. I'm participated in this group and have equipped with many skills such as first aid, leadership, and Ayosiaga Binjana, which means is an activity extracurricular for preparing for disaster. Next. There is three levels of youth Red Cross. Start from knowing about what is the RR until applying more in the community. Next. My experience in Child Forum, Wahana VC Indonesia through the Synergy project funded by USAID conducted capacity building on DRR for Child and Youth Forum in North and East Jakarta. Such activity that I have experienced as follows, socialization, training such as gender, social inclusion, digital media, DRR, leadership skill, communication skill, and citizen voice action. And then the last, we do campaign. Next, we move to my aspiration. Next, I feel grateful that the government and NGOs are still working together in reducing the risk of disaster. Equipping young people with DRR skills can stimulate their creativity and innovation in developing technology and information related to disaster preparedness and climate change issue. 
I hope that the government together with NGOs working closely with young people and pay more attention to involving child and youth in disaster preparedness. Having specific programs for capacity building of child and youth so young people can be empowered and resilient to the disaster. The Youth Action on the RR. As young people, we can provide more ideas to create a creative approach for innovation in DRR and climate change issue intervention. This approach, such as making eco-friendly objects, recycling, innovation, zero waste energy sources, etc. Near the future, my child forum members and I are planning to do a DRR campaign. I also encourage all of the child forum members to build a world that has good resilience in disaster. Thank you very much for welcoming me. That's Thank all. you very much. Thank you very much, Adele, for sharing. Very inspiring. Um, next, I would like to invite um, Kanishka from India. She is 15 years old and she's actually a member of Child Club. She will be sharing her experience in disaster risk reduction as well. Kanishka, please, you can turn on your camera and you can unmute yourself. Good morning, all of you. I'm Kanishka, class 10. I'm from Gurugram, Haryana. I am the president of Uran Group. I am also a member of Saksham Disaster Preparedness Group. Saksham is a group which aware people about disaster. Saksham initiative taken by World Vision of India. Thanks for giving me this golden opportunity to tell or talk about in front of you. Today, I'm going to share about the condition of pollution in Delhi and Gurugram. Next. Next. Currently, Gurgaon Air Quality Index is 200 across, which means the air consists many pollutants and air quality is very poor. And Gurgaon is counted in worst polluted according to airquality.com. Due to this COVID-19 cases also rises rapidly because the air that we inhale is of poor quality and also this coronavirus jumps, that's jumps we inhale. It has maximum effect on elderly person and children. In Delhi, poor quality of air irreversibly damages the lungs of 2.2 million of children. On 25 November 2019, the Supreme Court mentioned in the statement on the pollution of Delhi saying, Delhi has become more worse than hell. Air quality index of Delhi is generally moderate, 101 to 200 level between January to September, and it drastically changed to very poor, 301 to 401 range, and then to more hazardous in October to December. It's difficult to survive in this pollution. Gurugram of Haryana is often referred to as the millennium of city of India. However, behind the shine and glitter in an alien pollution, in a report of IQ Air, the air quality monitoring platform and green pace Guru Gram was declared the most polluted city in the world in 2018. And its air quality was seven times poorer than the prescribed safe limit by WHO, World Health Organization. Data reveals that the city had only three days in the whole year that the quality was safe. Next. Next slide, please. Now, I want to share about the reducing water level. The monsoon has not followed its normal pattern in July. India received 9.8% less than water rainfall in Gurgaon. The monsoon seemed to have the most officially as even up 19% deficient from normal rainfall, according to the meteorological department. Most of the urban cities 
in India like Gurgaon, Bangladesh, Mumbai, and Delhi mostly depend on groundwater for household use and domestic purpose. So, due to variation in rainfall, gutter is decreasing. Next slide, please. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, um, Kanishka, for sharing your observation and experience that is very much related to climate crisis and disaster risk. Um, next, we have one more representative from India. Her name is Nidali, and she's um, 23 years old. She will be speaking on urban flooding and on human rights. Hello everyone, I am Nidli from India. I'll be speaking on uh, urban flooding in my home state, Assam, which is a northern, northeastern state of India. So uh, Brahmaputra Valley connects India, Tibet, China, Bangladesh, along with the northeastern states of India. So uh, Assam, which is one of the northeastern state of, uh, is also northeastern state, is a flood prone state. So flood in Assam is a headache to the people of Assam as well as the government. So uh, Guwahati, which is one of, which is the capital city of India, is and also is the no, gateway of the northeast. So it is affected by flash flood and uh, um, heavy rainfall every year. Fl uh, the rainwater coming from Meghalaya surrounding hills caused major devastation of the roads and drains, heavy siltation, and tremendous problem of water logging. It has been a severe catastrophe faced in several wards of Guwahati Municipal Corporation. So there are certain reasons uh, which causes urban flooding in Guwahati. So some of the major reasons are natural drainage system of the city is insufficient, the frequent blockages in the drains, the artificial drainage system is not sufficient as compared to the population, illegal construction of the wetland areas, lack of open areas due to construction of buildings for unplanned expansion of the city. So the local people of the city are not only affected physically, but also their mental health along with their economic social and environmental conditions are affected severely. So due to flood, the daily wage earners lost their jobs. The roads are destroyed. The transportation has to be stopped. Many valuable belongings get damaged. Along with such economic losses, the surroundings area of the city gets disturbed. It creates a lot of imbalance in the ecosystem. The flood victims are mostly affected uh, by the waterborne diseases, they are mostly affected by skin diseases. Along with skin diseases, they are affected by diseases like malaria, dengue, encephalitis, typhoid, etc. So I am associated with Jharna Foundation, which is an NGO. Um, through this NGO, I am advocating with the municipal corporations for the development of the youth, children, and women, especially those are underprivileged, my work focuses on policy advocacy to make an inclusive society. Uh, I am working with the underprivileged youth and children to make them aware of the damage that is caused in the ecosystem and connecting them with the government policies. I have been campaigning so that the government takes proactive measures to mitigate flood uh, urban planning, proper urbanization planning, environmental conservation, and protecting the wetlands. I'm bringing awareness to the communities regarding risk mapping. It is very much required to have government collaboration among different departments and different states for the protection of our environment. The youth are the catalyst of change and our voices need to be heard at the local, national, and international level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neetli, for sharing your experience and your call for action. Um, it's very 
insightful. Next, um, we have some representatives from East Asia. We have um, Mika from Laos. She is 17 years old. She will be sharing the role of Lao children and youth in DRR. Mika, you can unmute yourself and turn on your camera. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mikam Gandasak. I am a representative of Lao students. Today, I um, would like to present about the topic role of Lao students and youth in DRR and climate change actions. Lao PDR is a landlocked country in Southeast Asia, border with Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar, China, and Cambodia. Laos has a lot of natural resources. Laos used to be green and clean, and Laos has um, Lao has ever had full of green and beautiful forests and least air pollution. But after time, uh, after the time passed, everything began to change. We have new building and new rich attractions. There are many things being developed for the better people live have improved, but the environment is getting worse because people are careless about protecting the environment and not considering the damaging effect of environment to damage, which has deforestation for farming, litter, uh, litter out of place, and air pollution from vehicles and factories. These are causes of climate change, which is caused of natural disasters such as roads, droughts, landslide, and pollution. So we have a solution like this. Uh, so these are our solutions. First is use garbage to be useful. As people have known that we use three R, deduce, deuce, and recycle to solve garbage problems. And we have found some things that can help to reduce waste, reuse, and recycle is called uh, EcoBrick. And EcoBrick is a plastic bottle packed with used uh, plastic to set density. They serve as reusable building blocks. Ecrobic can be used to produce uh, various items, including furniture, garden walls, and other structures. So if we can do ecrobic, that means we can do uh, three R's and we can solve one of the causes of pollution. And second solution is plant trees to replace the old ones which were cut. We should promote planting trees, especially on June 1st uh, in Laos. Is a national tree planting day. So many people in Laos, um, they're planting tree on this day. Trees, uh, trees help to fight or solve the climate change as trees are growing. They help to slow down and stop the climate change by removing carbon dioxide from the air, storing carbon in the trees and soil, and re releasing oxygen into the atmosphere. Trees provide many benefits to us every day. And these are our solutions that we need everyone to, uh, to do to protect the environment and solve climate change. We are on behalf of Lao youth who want to protect the environment. We therefore form a volunteer, a volunteer group to organize environmental conservation activities, names, some of the young volunteer group, such as we do cleaning in school, public places, we do eco brick in school mobilize uh, items to donate to fruits victims and joining activities about SDG. As a few, uh, as a few weeks ago, I, jo I joined uh, Lao Jude for SDG event and also another event. This show how much we care for the environment and climate change. Now is the time of climate action. Let's protect the earth by saving the environment. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mika, for sharing with us your experience and what the Laos children and youth are actually doing to improve climate crisis and disasters. Very insightful as well. Um, we have our last children representative. Her name is Madhusmita. She is 19 years old and she's from India. Um, Madhusmita, you can unmute yourself and you can also turn on your camera.
Madhumista, you have to unmute yourself to speak. We cannot hear you. Good morning. Welcome yeah. to all the eliminate planet guest and friend. I am Madhusmita Das, Kendrapada district, Odisha, India. Trained in CCDRR rescue and I will share in CCDRR. Next. My experience. I am part of the child's Child Center Disaster Risk Reduction. The year 2016 from my experience school days. I along my friend acquired knowledge and skill CCDRR planning and implementation at village level. Prior to CCDR and intervention, I thought that we are safe protected in our family and school, the risks permanent and temporary, were not noticed by village, teachers and local authorities and NGOs. The CCDRR intervention taught us how to identify risks through participatory approach and simultaneously develop plan and mitigate these risks. Next. The training and mock deals help us face re recent cyclone, Amphan, Fani, Bulbul, more, much more difficult, efficient. The, the exemplary work children and youth have done during Amphan and Fani cyclone, early warning rescue, was highly praised by the elders, panchayat, and media. Our activities, our, in, our initiative made the elder cooperators and help us our action which boosted and moral. The school safety plan has worked on eye opener, school management committee and authorities. Next. Some examples from children risk lens. In our catchment area, there is a high school run in a cyclo shelter, which is considered to be one of the safest buildings. When children identify 56 risks within the buildings and campus through hazard risks, harm process, elders will not believe but accepted process. Then the result, the finding were shared with the school authorities and prepared plan to address the risks with support from local authorities, including parents. Next, please. Example of children risk lens. Another example is about a rivulet in between two parts, the village. About 25 children from part of the village we are facing difficult to attend school for six months on two water logging. The risk was identified by children and immediately accepted, addressed with support from Panchat and other stakeholders. A wooden bridge is constructed with help children to cross a rivulet and attend the school round the year. Third example. A village approach a road to the school situated about two kilometers has never reflected in the development planning of local authorities until children grew identify it they pursued with the panchayat and accordingly. Next, please. My humble submission. Policies should be developed to make children a part of the development 
initiative to share their view during relief distribution the needs of young children is neglected especially children below 2 years of age how can priority their survival emergency the school safety initiative experiment and implemented in school should be scaled up in all the school true or meaningful participation of children need to be encouraged in all walks of life thank you okay. thank you for after meeting it son for photograph thank you Thank you very much, um, Mudus Muta. It was very um, interesting sharing and seeing the before after work. So this is, we have here, we have heard from around five children from Indonesia, Laos and India. Right now, I have the honor to invite two of our adult representative from the government. May I first call upon um, Professor um, Santosh? Uh, um, he will be sharing with us the role of children and youth in DRR and climate change. Um, Professor, please, you will have five minutes. Um, Professor, you will have to unmute yourself and you can also turn on your camera if you like to. Just a second. Uh, I'm trying. I can see over. Oh, it's over here. Is it okay now? Can you yes, hear me? We can, we can hear you and we can see you very well. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Thank you very much. First of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, this is very, very uh, uh, insightful for us to also know that what children are doing actually on their own at various places across the globe, especially in the Asia uh, Pacific and South East, uh, East Asia. I could hear Ade and uh, Kanishkas and Nidhi and Madhumesmita, all the children who were making presentation. And uh, uh, Kunal Sa is a very dear friend of us. And the kind of opportunity provided uh, uh, Rama was there. And to you all, uh, this is very interesting, uh, which we see the children's space in the uh, DRR planning itself. Uh, most of the time which we consider them as a vulnerable community and this kind of a discussion has already uh, uh, taken shape uh, both at the national level, different uh, national uh, nations and also that at the regional level and the global level. Sendai Framework 2 have recognized this, the need of the children in, uh, uh, in children's space in planning for DRR. Like in India, uh, uh, recognizing this, we also had this opportunity to start and look uh, these children issues differently. Uh, initially, we were fo focusing on the capacity development for all the stakeholders in terms of youth, uh, government officials, and so on and so forth. And uh, in our planning process of capacity development, also we had just focus on the uh, 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 children's vulnerability. So over the years, we could learn and we could find out that probably that is not enough. And so taking that uh, into consideration, we set up a center for child-centric disaster risk reduction, uh, which is focusing on child-centric related uh, disaster risk, uh, their perspective, their response, their risk reductions, and they are the actually managers so uh, we have taken this message through this center. Uh, UNICEF is our partner. And we have taken to almost all the states of the country. Uh, so, uh, but uh, important is that, uh, that adults are speaking about the children. 
very hardly we are getting children to speak about the children's issues. Like I could see the three uh, presentation from India alone. So that is encouragement and uh, in the also uh, what uh, we could hear from Indonesia that how they have youth Red Cross, uh, uh, Red Cross uh, at the grassroots level in their school level. So those kind of initiative to be started uh, in India also where we have large number of uh, thousands of schools and that how it should go in the school large vulnerability and how children are taking up those especially when the time of COVID-19, uh, one is this climate, which we say, but also that COVID-19, where the children's, the way they are actually affected. But now we see in most of the families, actually children and become the guardian of the uh, elder also. They are asking uh, uh, this, uh, their senior at the household level, uh, what to do and what not to do. And uh, what is the appropriate behavior for COVID-19 in maintaining social distancing, in maintaining uh, uh, the personal hygiene, in maintaining uh, the kind of uh, uh, wearing of mask and how to wear mask. And they're playing very, very critical role in this way. But what we miss here, there is space in the public policy planning, uh, which is as a kind of a, a long way to go. Uh, but uh, at many places that like UNICEF has been able to push that, so NIDM now in the apex body at the National Institute of Disaster Management, uh, which we see as that uh, how the, like many things which we've seen in the other disaster scenario, but the new emergence of risk have come up in the COVID-19 uh, scenario too. Uh, <clears throat> that is one which is very, very important to note as a uh, trauma. Uh, the trauma is a new thing which is coming uh, uh, in the lives of the children because they are confined to the household. They have the least physical mobility, especially in the urban area. <clears throat> Third, they are not going to their school. Uh, their school is closed. Uh, all the schools are closed, so they are uh, confining themselves there at the four walls of the house. Plus, they did not, they don't have this uh, meeting with their friends and relatives and also their friends. <laughs> their peer groups. So this has mounted uh, as a kind of a different kind of a challenges uh, among the children also. They do not ha have this uh, venting uh, kind of a mechanism uh, where they can go and uh, share their <coughs> experience. But the idea is to how to uh, these new emergence uh, challenges in the time of COVID-19, how that can also find the space in the children's planning process. How children could be heard and how children could be given the space uh, even at the time of COVID-19. So maybe that uh, platform idea which uh, Indonesia and uh, the place uh, which we see uh, that can be, that can even virtually we can provide and we can have a on kind of a venting meeting of the children. It's not necessarily what they are doing, but just to vent out uh, what they are fe feeling. So that kind of a platform, digital platform can also be brought in where children can speak loudly, they can shout and whatever, but we need to think of that how and that is also a kind of a the symbiotic relation between the parents and the children, like what we are finding here, if uh, all the parents, uh, like uh, both mother and father, parents are working and children are also occupying the house space uh, and their uh, online study going on, that is creating a further challenge that uh, mother also have to be hooked up on the line at nine o'clock, then the office begins. Father is also getting engaged in the work from home. And the both the uh, both or two, three, four, whatever the number of children they are, they are getting hooked up uh, with the kind of a school learning process. So all are hooked. And who will uh, have this uh, household chores? Uh, the uh, the support system is not allowed inside the house. So this is a new kind of a phenomena. So we require new imagining also, uh, which is uh, uh, we have to uh, focus on. So our child-centric disaster risk reduction is also exploring. We had conducted large number of webinars with the children uh, and parents and they are interacting with us. 
So what we are doing is now uh, in the time of COVID-19, we are trying to have a platform where children can speak uh, uh, loudly on that. What are the issues in the time of COVID-19 uh, and add on to the disaster risk reduction uh, because we have now uh, the new policy which we can uh, we are thinking of uh, integration of public health process and also disaster risk reduction together. Uh, both cannot be separated. So these issues can also be thought children uh, with the children also that how these two can go together and how children can provide such kind of a solutions also uh, as a youth, uh, as a guardian of the planet uh, with this workshop is there. So I would request uh, the youth uh, from other parts of the countries also to get uh, associated with our child-centric disaster risk reduction, uh, which is a, a national outfit, but we are trying to go as a kind of international outfit also, where the children can share their knowledge, uh, the children can share their experience, where children can like uh, other partners, save the children and uh, World Vision, uh, UNICEF, uh, all those are there, uh, plan international, so what we are saying that how they are supporting the government initiatives in this direction. And uh, we have also brought uh, the Department of uh, Women and Children also uh, on the board uh, for addressing children issues in, the, in this disaster risk management. Like an IDM is a disaster management institution. Uh, National Disaster Authority is a disaster authority and we are trying to uh, give that space. Uh, it's not that uh, protecting children is important, but they are the future generation. And they're the real guardian of the, uh, this uh, planet. So I would not say much here, but I would just uh, uh, request all the children also to get in touch with our center and uh, help us in enriching the center, strengthening the center, and some of the ideas which you have shared uh, help in implementing that centers. And I will also urge all the partners, those who are supporting this uh, event to come together and let us fight it out and provide that adequate space to the children so that their voice can be heard and can be brought into the public policy. So thank you very much and wish you all good luck for this uh, very, very important uh, uh, initiative taken by uh, uh, all the partners uh, who are working on this issue. And we would be glad to take this uh, discussion also as you are taking to different places also. Thank you very much and uh, the young children who are listening to that. We are tomorrow also organizing uh, this uh, child-centric DRR where children are speaking uh, tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And if you are interested, you can speak in that platform. We have a space. Uh, so you can uh, very well, and our office will get in touch with you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Professor Santosh. Um, thank you very much for acknowledging the role and the importance of children and youth, and also for children around the region, around countries to work together. Um, we will have 30 minutes um, panel discussion afterwards. We can still ask Professor more questions. But now I like to invite Dr. Udrik, who is from the government of Indonesia to share about engagement of children, adolescent and young people in DRR and CCA in Indonesia. Um, Doctor, please. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, I can get this opportunity to discuss uh, with the young generation. Uh, I would like to inform some of the activities in Indonesia related to the engagement of children, adolescent and young people in DRR. Uh, next. Okay, uh, it is uh, also uh, very important that our president uh, support uh, it very much about the uh, education conduct uh, disaster, uh, that it is one of the uh, basic uh, information that uh, from this instruction uh, as a national agency, uh, BNPB uh, would like to uh, do some important thing. It is not only from the our uh, uh, agency and also other uh, related uh, disaster risk reduction agency also, uh, or minister that also uh, 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 do this in instruction together. Next. Uh, so uh, one of the important things that we uh, try to uh, overcome is uh, because uh, Indonesia is um, surrounding by a lot of the uh, disaster. 
and uh, to study about the uh, primary and secondary education unit in disaster area is one of our main project that we have done for all uh, for about some years uh, recently uh, because of uh, a lot of uh, school that uh, now is located uh, are located in the Ron area next yeah uh, and uh, because of that uh, a lot of the uh, ministry and uh, agency uh, tried to support some activities uh, related to the school uh, as you can see in this uh, presentation that we have a lot uh, one of uh, that we just uh, finished the activity related to the uh, COVID-19 is uh, what I mentioned here as KKNT, uh, that it is uh, one of collaboration uh, activities uh, from the NPB, uh, from the Ministry of Education and also uh, local government, or MOA, uh, and also uh, some of, uh, uh, of uh, other uh, institutions, including the uh, of course the university so we did uh, the uh, activity that uh, carried out at the higher education level uh, and this activity carried out the simultaneously when students carry out what we call as real work lecture by including the issue of disaster and COVID in their activities so uh, student uh, young generation as and also uh, uh, what a very, very st a strong uh, generation that can be uh, deployed uh, into a various uh, village. But in this KKNT, uh, every student uh, will ro uh, work uh, at uh, their uh, own home uh, to give uh, some uh, activities uh, that uh, support for uh, COVID-19 recovery. Next. Uh, and it is one of the very interesting lessons learned from a uh, student uh, related to the earthquake of 5.4 uh, uh, Richter scale in uh, 2018. And uh, in this, uh, we, we can have how uh, our uh, engagement with students uh, make uh, that during uh, this earthquake, uh, were 10 children playing uh, volleyball at school and a tsunami came and uh, they immediately escaped to the back of the school. And uh, in this time, student and teacher can uh, survive for following school safety program. So this uh, what uh, we uh, can see that the activity uh, uh, can uh, have a good uh, result uh, that safe school program contribute to improving their preparedness and knowledge uh, also shared to their friend and family. Uh, it is what uh, the teacher mentioned that uh, your safe school program is beneficial. You have succeeded and many people had survived. We no longer carry out simultaneous uh, sim uh, simulation, but it is a real practice. So it is one of uh, what we are uh, really proud of the uh, activity because it uh, gave good result of what we uh, Indonesian try to do uh, with the young generation. Next. Yes, uh, so uh, we, we uh, have a lot of activity related to the uh, young generation uh, that uh, has something to do with the uh, 4.0 uh, industrial uh, that now is uh, become a focus from every uh, countries. So we have uh, uh, activity like uh, building software, uh, learning. We also have uh, some activity, but how we use technology, uh, disaster preparedness assessment and et cetera, uh, to do something, make a competition like hackathon and also uh, other activities uh, that can uh, give uh, some place for young generation to do something for disaster risk reduction. Next. Uh, this uh, some of uh, photos that uh, we can see how we work together with a young generation with people uh, young generation help people to make 3d mapping workshop utilizing gis and also participatory 3d map next 
Yes, it is uh, one of the uh, activities when we make uh, what we call as a hackathon for hacking food in uh, Balenda, Bandung. So this activity is very uh, interesting to uh, make uh, such kind of a competition uh, related to GIS and uh, as well as uh, for the uh, other disciplines. Next. And uh, this one of the uh, photo when we did a kaka in thematic or a real work of when the uh, like, uh, student uh, go to the field for a COVID-19 program. So it is very uh, uh, interesting because a student can, uh, can support and also give us some information how we can work uh, in the COVID-19. It means that the activity is still uh, going on, but uh, we always uh, do it uh, in the uh, health protocol. Next. Yeah, so that's all of uh, what I can share. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, doctor, for sharing the experience in Indonesia. Um, it's also very eye-opening for our children and youth here. So for the next 30 minutes, I'll pass on to our moderator, Nadia. We'll be going into a 30 minutes panel discussion where children and youth and the speaker can answer some question and answer. At the same time, if you have questions you want to post, either you can put it in the chat box or you can also raise your hands and we can unmute you. Uh, Nadia, over to you. Um, Nadia, you will have to unmute. Hello, can everyone hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes, clear. Yes. I'm so sorry about that. So um, thank you very much, uh, Christabel. Christabel, how many, uh, how many minutes do we have for the panel discussion? 30, 30 sharp. Okay, 30 minutes, okay. So um, we, we heard a lot of really good uh, sharing from our uh, young people, panelists, and even adult panelists from the government. Um, without further ado, I would like to open the floor now for any questions or feedbacks or comments from the participants. Um, we have a question here from, um, is Robin around, Robin or Rani? Hello. Yes, we have a question from Rani or Robin. Hello, my name is Robinson. I'm from Saksam Disaster Preparedness Team. And I have a question on the panel that in NCR of Delhi and Gurma, and most of the cities in India, mostly the urban cities. They mostly depend on uh, groundwater for drinking water and for house purpose. This year we have received very less than forest compared to the other years. So, what are the steps government is taking to tackle uh, the issue? Uh, the groundwater is decreasing very uh, rapidly. And the drinking water also is increasing. So, what are the steps government is taking to tackle the issue to increase the ground level, groundwater level? Okay, thank you very much, Robin. I think uh, the question is for the government of India. Maybe Professor Santosh Kumar. Do you have any comments or answer to the question? Hello, Professor. Or do we have any other? Um... Hello. Yeah, yes, Professor Santosh. Yeah. Uh, did you hear uh, the question from uh, Robin? Uh, no, can, can you repeat that? Because uh, I was, yeah. yeah Robin, do you, yeah, Robin, do you want to quickly repeat? Okay. Yes, sir. 
uh, in India, like mostly in urban cities, the people that is mostly in groundwater for uh, drinking, for drinking water and for household uses. Right. And in India, this year we have received very less rainfall, and the urban cities they are in danger in uh, like out of drinking water. So in what are the steps government is taking to increase the groundwater level? Ah, this is a question uh, which is uh, uh, largely related with the groundwater uh, uh, rejuvenation. And government of India has taken a lot of initiatives for this in terms of having a, a new water policy also has come up. So I would request, uh, because in a short two minutes, uh, we cannot uh, summarize the whole thing what government of India has taken this season uh, in terms of uh, rejuvenating uh, uh, water. But I would suggest if you go uh, on the website of uh, Ministry of Water Resources and the Jal Sakti, uh, where a lot of restructuring has taken place also at the ministerial level, top level, for ensuring water uh, scarcity and uh, water facilities plus uh, water security. So uh, I would suggest to just uh, uh, visit this uh, Ministry of Jal Sakti website. And you will find plenty of work which is being done at the ground, uh, at the grassroots level, and a lot of project support which is coming through that. So, uh, because in two minutes and uh, saying something about this, what are the new initiatives which government of India take? Uh, probably will not be possible for me to summarize. So, I would suggest to visit that site, please. Yes, yes, I, I agree with that. So, um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Santosh. Um, yeah, because water is, is also water levels are really very great issues in different communities now. And it is also happening with the integrated approach. Forestry is taking for the forestry, a forestation project is going on by the Ministry of uh, Forest Affairs, where this the uh, water deficit is there, and uh, where uh, Government of India has brought also an atlas. Uh, where the red zone, uh, yellow zone, and the green zone has been done, the, where this a uh, lot of water scarcity and where the intervention is required and accordingly this is being taken. So that information is also available on the website. So accordingly, they are moving it. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Santosh. We have thank another you. We have another question from Pong Savan from Lao PDR. Pong Savan. For the other for uh, the other uh, webinar participants who have questions, you can raise your hand so I can put you on queue. Mm -hmm. um, is Pong Savan here? Okay. While we're waiting for Pong Savan, we can move on to um, Needly. I see Needly's hand is raised. Go ahead, Needly. Any uh, uh, other question? I don't see uh, in chat box. Probably. Yeah. I mean, they, um, Needly has her, her hands raised. Go ahead, Needly. Okay, so uh, I have a question uh, regarding Assam floods. So Assam is affected by flood every year. So what are necessary steps is both the local and national government taking as a proactive measure to face this cat cat catastrophe? Very good question. Uh, let me tell you, uh, Government of India, now uh, we know that disaster management in the country is a state subject. So uh, first is that the state government has to come up with the various initiatives. But other than that, government of India is facilitating the process from the national government. So what national government is doing, first let me uh, quickly, uh, as you are aware that um, uh, when the disaster management started in the country, we had a just response-based approach and relief distribution approach for the flood or for that matter, any other disasters. But now government of India and as India and all other uh, countries in the world, they have become signatory of the Sendai framework and also uh, changed their focus from response to pre-disaster management and planning for the risk reduction. So in this context, government of India has made a lot of uh, changes in the initial format of uh, system of response, system of recovery, system of prevention and mitigation, and system of risk reduction, which was not existing earlier. 
and it is a multi hazard approach where it's whether it's a flood whether it's a cyclone whether there is a drought whether there is a forest fire or whether there is a heat wave whether there is a cold wave or is an earthquake so government of india uh, has planned for this and uh, national disaster authority has come up with the central uh, different plans central water commission is coming with the early warning system development of early warning system so they can be given advance warning where the flood uh, is happening but the challenge is happening in the early warning system that when the cloud burst happens and the incessant rent happens in a smaller period of time that is not getting predicted in terms of the cloud burst but gradually we are picking up and science and technology is also helping in terms of early warning coming to the disaster response uh, we have a very good disaster response system uh, is a late uh, late induct uh, in planning we have a national disaster response force 10000 personnel more than 10000 personnel trained in different kind of a response system uh, be it flood cyclone nuclear disaster biological disaster all kinds of disaster is a multi hazard response force so they are supporting this state government to the state disaster response force special dedicated force for disaster response which was not earlier and many of the countries in the world they have not dedicated uh, kind of a force so they are no other job but they are what they are doing it they are in the peace time when there is no flood situation they are helping community for capacity building so this is a very good opportunity to engage them for child centric uh, drr engaging them for the capacity building of the youth and the children also so they are uh, going uh, all across the state all across the districts of the country and uh, all across the panchayat uh, level so idea is to optimize their existence mm. and uh, there are many risk reduction uh, methods are also taking place the uh, national government is uh, uh, prime minister has given 10 point agenda uh, for uh, the execution of sendai framework in the asian ministerial conference uh, uh, the first uh, asian ministerial conference took place after the sendai so virtually it is second but the first after the sendai framework so there the prime minister is also emphasizing on the capacity lo building local capacity and in that local capacity bringing women and children building youth capacity also uh, one of the agenda so i'm sure uh, with this um, uh, your question would be answered but uh, i will al always say that you can get in touch with me Uh, you can have my phone number and email id also and uh, whatever the assistance which we can give as a youth or uh, to the youth organization we would be grateful to do that thank you so much sir thank you professor santosh it's really a very good opportunity now to be linking with the government mm -hmm. for the young people to be linking with the government for rr and cce so um shall we move on to pong savan pong savan are you ready with your question hello Yes. Yes, Pang Savan, go ahead. Mm, I am question. Yeah. Uh, who is I this? I have a small question. Yeah. Who is this? Can you just a speak a little louder, please? Yes. Take mic uh, near to you. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. So, yes. Who is this? Madhusmita. Ah, uh, hi, Madhushmita. Go ahead, please. Is there any plan to implement school safety plan in all school in India? Yes, uh, there is a national uh, school safety plan, uh, which is being implemented uh, by many states of the country, which government of India is funding, and government of India is funding uh, for uh, all the uh, states, uh, and uh, they are scaling it up also. and they are also requesting that uh, school should come forward and um, this department of hrd also should take place uh, as a project as a kind of a integrated approach but ministry of uh, this national disaster authority nidm and uh, state disaster authorities they are taking up the school safety program with their school management and what we are saying is just not confined to the response but also inform and educate uh, children uh, in the uh, pre disaster planning in the recovery and also that uh, risk reduction and so that is there and uh, but india's uh, size is too large we have not been able to reach out to all the schools so far so um, uh, uh, but definitely the project is on for the last 5 years it is going on 
and I'm sure it will reach to uh, all the schools by another five years of time. So get engaged, uh, Madhusmita, and uh, if you can send uh, by email uh, your number, we can also get in touch and we will try under your leadership at the, in the, where you are there, we can take this uh, school safety program also forward. Our yeah. child-centric disaster risk reduction can also get in touch with you. Yeah, thank you very much again, Professor Santosh. So can we now have Pong Savan from Lao PDR? Are you ready with your question? Pong Savan, okay. Go ahead, Pong Savan, please unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, sir. I'm from Laos. So I have uh, one question to argue. As an uh, expert, any, you have an, any key recommendations for you? Uh, you want to advise uh, children and young people to do? Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we can, we can uh, give the question uh, to give the floor for Dr. Udrek to answer this time so that uh, it will not be an India webinar. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Indonesia, we would also like to hear from <laughs> yes, Dr. Udrek. Excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, is it possible to repeat the question? Because uh, frankly speaking, I have a two Zoom meeting right now. Yes, yes. Um, Pong Savan, can you repeat your question, please? What is the advice for youth, probably? Huh? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, any key recommendation you want to advise a student and young people to do? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, uh, I don't know about uh, in India, we in Indonesia, uh, firstly, uh, supported uh, by uh, UNESCO. Uh, have uh, what we call as you inspire it is the uh, young generation on uh, disaster risk reduction that have a lot of activities uh, linkage, uh, linking uh, inside of uh, indonesia and after that we build what we call as you inspire alliance that right now have uh, uh, also have a brand in uh, a lot of uh, countries in uh, uh, especially in asia so i think um, it is a good chance uh, to have something that uh, what uh, done by the uh, young generation when the uh, like me uh, or other uh, institution uh, can support everything but we don't give so many direction because we hope that a young generation can uh, think can do based on their uh, creativity uh, as a uh, as a, uh, what, uh, because we have uh, in different uh, generation. And uh, we really appreciate that the result from the young generation when we give them and also facilitate them uh, to do something uh, and the result is much, much more than we can think. So it is a very good uh, ex exercise. And also uh, last two months, uh, last two years, I went to Thailand uh, and try to make some activities to, for disaster risk reduction. It is also mostly supported by a uh, young generation. And uh, we can uh, discuss uh, some for your thing uh, uh, based on the, uh, our uh, location, because of course it is different from one country to uh, another. Uh, but uh, we can have the same vision and uh, if we can continue something like that. So, uh, was sharing idea not only for, from uh, like Zoom but also physical projects that we can do uh, uh, inside the the uh, Asia has become very very uh, interesting. Uh, we learn from uh, each uh, country very much. Thank you. Thank you, Pa Udrek. And uh, with that, we have uh, ad another question from Ade from Indonesia. Ade, go ahead. Thank you. I want to ask about one question. The way I see one of the aspects of the vulnerability factor in flood in Jakarta is the decline of the land level. I would like to ask what is government master plan in overcoming flood issue in Jakarta and other area? 
and also how the government plan to empower child and youth so we can be involved in the mitigation strategy. Thank you. A oh, wonderful question, Ade. Um, again, Dr. Udek and other panelists also from yeah. Indonesia, Vanda can also follow up later. Yes, uh, th thank you very much. Uh, uh, as you know, this issue uh, is one of the biggest issues that uh, also addressed uh, in the what uh, recent three years regarding to the land subsidence in Indonesia, and it is also related to the acceleration of the uh, the uh, uh, what the development of uh, the city because there are a lot of the high rise building and also uh, use the uh, underground water. So maybe these two uh, problems that uh, caused the uh, land subsidence. And um, uh, it has something to do also with other uh, uh, potential disaster. If we have an, like an earthquake, uh, it may also cause something, uh, another problem. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, maybe it is one of the reasons why uh, government uh, proposed to move the uh, the the city uh, uh, the uh, to the uh, other built as a new of city of uh, governmental Indonesia in uh, Kalimantan uh, because we uh, may, may may probably need to uh, share the activity that mostly centered in the Java move to Kalimantan. And also uh, a lot of uh, activity, of course, that has already done uh, in uh, Jakarta uh, to solve the problem. Uh, uh, we have already had also with uh, what micro donation uh, data uh, in Jakarta in order to understand the real condition, the real problem. But uh, of course, with the country that has already developed like that, it is not easy for us to make a regulation uh, that uh, maybe uh, give some impact that also need uh, our consideration uh, with uh, other uh, aspect like uh, what transportation, the urban, the uh, or the the special planning, and etc. So uh, I think uh, both uh, can be done. It means that we try to share uh, the uh, what the, the the activity not only in Java but also try to develop uh, central uh, activities in Kalimantan or other uh, other uh, other province. So we hope that in the future we can manage Jakarta better. That's uh, my uh, answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pa Odrek. Uh, Van der Lengkong from Plan International, you have any other addition yes. to that? Mm -hmm. Thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you so much, uh, Nadia, and thank you, Pa Udrek and uh, Professor Santos, as well as the amazing uh, young people, children and youth, Ade, Kanisha, Nidli, Mikam, and Amadusita. So I just would like to add uh, from what uh, Dr. Udrek already basically mentioned. So. Um, under the Children and Youth Network, especially uh, some the consortium uh, member like Plan International, Save the Children, uh, World Vision, and Mercy Malaysia, we basically support the ASEAN uh, for uh, implementing a program called ASEAN Safe School Initiative. But, so, but before so you close, can I request one thing? No, 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 it's not yet closed. Don't worry, Professor Zantosh. Uh, 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 because as you have said, uh, you have Asia Pacific Coalition for School Safety. Why can't we have a India uh, uh, and uh, maybe South Asia kind of a school safety or not only school safety, children's safety uh, yeah, um, kind of a uh, consortium? Or uh, yeah. Can I can I just uh, finish uh, first, sir? So yeah, the the ASEAN Safe School Initiative is basically the initiative with ASEAN which it is basically an ASEAN program, sir. They have okay, the okay. ATMER work program. And under that work program, there is a one priority program called Build Safely. 
And so uh, we as the CSO is uh, supporting them with funding from, uh, from ECHO. And this project is basically already uh, complete because we already hand over it back to, uh, to the ASEAN. Uh, when you are asking about SARC, about the South Asia, we, we try basically to, to advocate for this uh, in number of occasion. I remember in the Atmar, uh, sorry, in the AP, AMCDRR in Thailand, even in India. But of course, uh, from the CSO side, we also working uh, with the support from uh, the donor funding. So as of now, um, what we are trying is basically to really uh, working with the, the agency in each of the country and in India, I mean, Plan International working closely with your government for school safety initiative. So that's basically it. But my point in here, just to address what uh, the, the, the question before from the young people, that we also try our best to collaborate with the government. And the government of India, the government of Indonesia already shared the amazing work that uh, we from the CSO side is try to collaborate as well. Because this is not something that we can able to done only by one individual on one agency. Um, so that's basically, and we, we continue to, to work closely with number of the government uh, to really uh, put forward the importance of school safety and try to embed it also the issue of climate uh, crisis. So, and so are you open? Are you open with the coalition like support child centric DRR which we have? We may have the ASEAN uh, this linkages with them, or otherwise like uh, I was uh, director of the SAG Disaster Management Center, and uh, during that time we wanted to set up a South Asia child centric coalition. Uh, and the center also. Uh, but uh, by the time uh, my tenure got over, but we established in India. So uh, we can scale it up uh, and we can have a Stark and ASEAN kind of a linkages. Yeah, and I think, was... yeah, I think um, that will be for, because I have uh, some other questions um, in the pipeline right now. Maybe this one is related to the ASEAN SARC um, engagement. The question is, how do we bring about cross-country collaborations while holding governments, especially from the developed countries, accountable for their actions and failures to uphold their promises on climate, on, in climate change adaptation? So I think the safe school, the, the discussion on the safe school engagement uh, or collaboration between SAR and ASEAN is um, very good. Yeah, maybe very we can good. have the benefit of Kunal Shah and also Save the Children, all the partners which we are seeing, UNICEF, yes. and uh, we will discuss uh, this issue. Yeah. And thank you very much for giving me this information about Asia yes. Pacific Coalition. And, um, and to add to what Vanda, Vanda yeah, already please. mentioned, um, actually the CSOs are, um, have this Asia Pacific Coalition for School Safety where we provide technical support to different governments um, in Asia Pacific on um, implementing a comprehensive approach on school safety. So the ASI is uh, government led. So the engagement of um, SARC and ASI will be government, um, intergovernment by bilateral engagement between the two bodies. But the CSO engagement will be through the Asia Pacific coalition for school safety. So we are a third party to the engage to the collaboration of ASEAN and SARC. So yeah, I, I've I've um, I've known all your work on in SARC, uh, Professor Santosh, especially when I was still with ADPC. I think I met you during that time, and I know you've been pushing so much for yeah. uh, regional collaboration. Regional uh, not course. only on school safety, but in our yeah, region, region to region collaboration. We wanted ASEAN SARC collaboration. And we yeah. had this in the Indonesia between the MOU to be signed between the SARC Secretary General and ASEAN Secretary General. Yes. So hopefully <laughs> with climate action, with the youth also, we will be able to um, right. really, uh, achieve this uh, vision or these dreams that we have. Not, can, I, can I add one more thing? I mean, basically just to address because we have children and young people in here. Exactly. So uh, in, in terms of the flood preparedness as the question before, I mean, not only in India, I think there's another example like in Vietnam, how the young people really take their part in the recent flood response. They try to communicate what happened in specific uh, area in Quang Bing and Quang Chi. And for Plan International, they really help us in order to secure funding also for the flood response. In Bang Bangladesh and Nepal, we work with young people and children. We, we, we support them uh, to create the, 
disaster risk reduction committee in school as well as at the community level. And we involve also uh, uh, the LGBTQI people. And one of the recommendation from the consultation is request for an inclusive approach on DRR and climate action. So for the children and young people in India, Laos and Indonesia, you are not alone because in other country also your peer, your young, your uh, peer of children and, and young people also um, having the same concern. And I just would like to flag what um, Greta Thunberg, I think the young activist, uh, children from, from Sweden said, and I'm, I'm very happy to see that all the children and young people now show that you guys are united and basically you are unstoppable. And as an adult, we hear you. We, 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 we get all your point, your recommendation, your input, and from Plan International and the other agency who are in the call, trying our best to advocate it for the, the next um, Asia Pacific Ministerial Conference on DRR next year. So bear with us and please keep reaching us to us to, to share your views on DRR and climate crisis. And keep up the great work. You guys are doing amazing, amazing work. Thanks, Nat. Over back to you. Thank you very much, Vanda. Maybe we can have one last word from um, Professor Santosh and uh, 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 Pa Udrek before we wrap up this call. I mean, this uh, no, panel. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, really. Uh, indeed, it's uh, grateful to all of you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, it's a lot of learning. Uh, I could learn uh, from the children's presentations also and the activities which you have been uh, taking up in all this region, Asian, uh, Asia Pacific region. This will help us in formulating our strategy. We are also on to it, uh, and we are formulating our next year calendar. So that would help in bringing much more uh, kind of uh, children. And we will have also personal discussion with all of you. Uh, uh, we will send an email and hope uh, what the children have said. And we would also like to get in touch with those children like Eddie and uh, Kanishka and Mikam from Lao and Madhumesnata and Edi. Uh, and uh, children like uh, you have on their uh, on your own uh, uh, this consortium, uh, helping India also to uh, with uh, Kunal Shah's experience and experience of uh, the plans if the children world vision and UNICEF uh, children and youth child fund. I'm sure uh, our child centric will have very quick working group on this. And thank you very much once again to all the children who have motivated us to actually think differently. On the issues. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Professor Santosh. Um, last word from uh, uh, Pa Udrek. Yes. Uh, I also would like to thank to uh, invite me to this uh, very interesting uh, panel discussion. I am looking forward for the uh, cross country uh, activities uh, for young generation uh, on the RR. I think uh, when we work uh, together because a disaster doesn't uh what uh doesn't know about the what country uh we it can uh happen uh, everywhere uh so uh, the the collaboration from the young generation regionally is very very important thank you thank you very much uh pa Udrek. i i see some some people some participants still have their hands raised can you just put your questions in the chat box and we will let some panelists answer them offline um, because we need to wrap up um, the discussion right now. This is a very uh, active discussion. So hopefully it will continue offline also. Um, so with that, I'm closing, closing the floor for the, for the panel discussion and over to you, back to you, Christabel. Thank you, Nadia, and thank you for all the questions from the audience and also from our CMY speakers. And thank you, Canal Fonda, Professor and Doctor, for taking the questions. So next, we'll have to have um, Rika from UNICEF to close us. Um, Rika, please. Thank you, Christabel. Um, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. And I would like to first congratulate World Vision and other partners really putting this together, um, the tireless effort uh, on the consultation, as well as bringing this report and having this kind of discussion at the regional level. It's really inspiring. It's uh, bringing back all the partners, children and youth together that what we are doing and what we can do to make the future better. 
Um, I would also like to thank all the speakers, especially uh, Professor Santos and Dr. Odraka for all those inspiring work that has been going on in India and Indonesia, and also all our young presenters um, for sharing their enriching experiences and also inspiring contribution on the agenda and call for action. It was definitely a very rich discussion. And as Vanda mentioned, and also other partners mentioned, it's it's really a hot topic, a hot kick um, in the current situation, especially when really the pan this unprecedented situation of pandemic is uh, further challenging the agenda. Um, I would just like to highlight three points uh, why this is an important discussion for this region. Uh, first, you know, our region is one of the most disaster prone region and increasingly um, we have been, children has been facing all these uh, climate induced uh, disasters and um, according to the report, 99% of the children, they mentioned that they have been facing some kind of crisis situation, climate crisis situation over the past years. And we know that in any crisis situation, um, young and the most vulnerable suffer the most and disproportionately. Um, children, they are the least responsible for climate change, but um, they bear the greatest burden of its impact. And climate crisis is not an issue. It's actually a child rights crisis because it does not only threaten or undo these major development gains that um, you know, we have been doing for the past years, but also it impedes the realization of all the rights of their rights to survival, their rights to development uh, and participation and, as well as protection. So this is a, a burning um, issue and an important part, um, issue in the region. Secondly, um, children and youth, um, as we heard from all these young speakers that they are just not the victims. And we heard all these young champions, how empowered and education, educated they can be really the agents of change. Um, they can work on the policy advocacy. And um, as Nidli mentioned, uh, Nidli from India mentioned like how she's working on policy advocacy to uh, make an inclusive society. It was like not only her, but all these inspiring stories that has been shared by children. That's um, that's really something we as an adult need to learn from. And um, so children and young people, I think um, not only as a partner of this DR and climate change, we as a whole, as a government, as um, all the stakeholders, we need to consider um, not only consider, but also uh, can provide a key role um, in terms of uh, bringing their voices, amplifying their voices and issues in the disaster and climate related strategies and also environmental strategies. So they should be the center piece of DR and climate change strategies. Um, but also I would like to mention um, our youth champion from Indonesia, he mentioned about how they are really bringing this innovative solutions to work on the climate action. And it's, it's really, um, they are really contributing to the society as a whole. And the third point is really protecting children from impacts. Unless these risks and this crisis are prevented, mitigated or prepared for, they will erode all the development gains and that will cause more harm to the children, to the communities and social system. So inclusive DRR definitely is a major component and building resilience and environmental sustainability should be the core element of services and systems that children depend on the survival and well-being. Um, services such as health, education, water sanitation, nutrition should be should be prioritized um, as they will be on the increasingly pressured as a result of climate related weather events. And as we heard also um, from our young speaker, how concerned they are on this uh, receding water situation, um, the air pollution that has been affecting their uh, overall health and development. So we need to ensure as a partner, as a, um, as a partner with the young and young population to really make ensure that these services can continue to function without any disruption and uh, protecting their rights in the face of uh, changing climate. Um, governments, what we are encouraging is like we 
the sector development strategies, budgets, and infrastructure that should integrate disaster risk reduction and climate and environmental sustainability as a core element. So um, at last, what I would like to really uh, give applause to all the young participants and also um, really acknowledge the work being done by the government of India and government of Indonesia. And if we recognize our collective responsibility and obligation uh, to uphold the right of children in the context of disaster risk reduction, uh, to provide a safe, sustainable and clean environment for the children and for generations um, of the children to come. Um, and thank you very much. Um, and and yeah, I, th I think um, I'll close here and I'll um, hand over to Christabel. It's over to you. Thank you, Rika, for this wonderful closing and summary. Um, just next slide. Um, this is the end of our webinar. Um, I'd like to once again thank all the supporting partners, including Plan Safe for Children, World Vision, UNMGCR, Child Fund, and UNICEF, as well as OCHA, ICVA, and ADRRN for hosting this series of webinar. If you have any inquiry, please feel free to contact me at this email. We will also be sharing some of um, the recording with you. So thank you, everyone and have a very blessed day ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Bye. Christmas in very well advance. Advance. Yeah. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Thank you all. Thank you.